All right, now we're recording. So we just missed a few things. We got to go back to Bill from Pennsylvania, right? <laughs> hey, but nobody heard about my mistakes on the recording. <laughs> okay, so in the last month, has anyone had um, a rejection from somebody from, okay, Carla, Martin, Congratulations. We always clap for anyone that's had a rejection because that's a, that shows that you're really getting your work out there and you're willing to suffer that pain, which is painful at times when you get, um, when you get um, rejected. Um, so Terry and Uncle Billy uh, say that they are from Bakersfield, but they're in Paso now. Okay, Paso Robles, I would take it, so. <clears throat> Anybody else have rejection or a, um, you know, you entered something and you heard something not favorable. Okay, so Carla Stanley, so both Carla's, wow. Anybody else named Carla and maybe you have a... <laughs> okay, and here's the biggie, um, success stories. Anyone have a publication? or something like that. So what I'm gonna do is I am going to unmute you. So one at a time, raise your hands again. I got Phyllis, I got Annis and Sandy. Okay, so Sandy, why don't you go? Cause you're unmuted. I found out um, <clears throat> that the anthology that I'm going to be a part of called um, In the Midst, it's a COVID-19 anthology. Uh, has gone to print and should be available early next month. Awesome. Congratulations. And Phyllis, I'm going to unmute you. So you're going to have to unmute yourself after I do that. Okay. So I uh, finally, three years in the writing, <laughs> uh, Body in the Orchard, a cozy mystery uh, about Bakersfield. Um, it came out on Amazon eBooks, and I had a free giveaway. Seven hundred and thirty free downloads. Awesome! Wow! Some paid downloads as well, and I've sold about twenty copies I, that I have. Um, and uh, I'm, I'm just, I'm really excited. It's my fifth uh, mystery, but it's the the first one that I've been able to have a physical book and a really good launch and to know what I'm doing. And I think it's also my best one. So Awesome. Good. Congratulations. Who else? I know Annis, you've got one. Okay, hold on. I'm going to unmute you. Okay, Annis, go ahead. Oh, wait. Hello, everybody. Um, if you've been coming to Open Mic Mondays, you've been hearing me read some poems from our anthology that Anka Hodenpile and I are contributors to. And that book uh, was released October 30th. We have uh, a beautiful cover here for you to see. It's called Enough, Say Their Name, Messages from Ground Zero to the World. And we're really excited about it. Um, we had a reading last Thursday, and we'll be having another one uh, in December, December 1st. If you're interested in information about that reading, how you can attend, it's put on by the Coos Bay Library, and uh, we can get you information. Thank you very much. We're very excited, to say the least. <laughs> I had a chance to see the book in person, and it's absolutely gorgeous. It's full color inside. It's um, not just the cover, it's, it's full cover full color, color all the way through and it's beautiful. Anybody else have a success? Hold on, Tammy, I'm gonna unmute you. Okay. Um, yeah, I got a story accepted in the Chicken Soup of the Soul series. Ooh, so I was really, really excited about that. That's exciting, which series is it? This is the one, um, Divine Inspiration. Divine Inspiration, well, do you know when it's coming out? January. Okay, cool. Keep us updated. That's awesome. Congratulations. <laughs> I saw another hand. Um, somebody else. Terry and Carol. Now you guys change your name, right? <laughs> so you guys have, okay, hold on. I'm going to mute you. I liked Uncle Willie. Yeah, I know. <laughs> okay, Terry and Carol. I actually, those names are up there because I just got cast at BCT um as as uh, part of it's a wonderful life the radio series 
Oh, cool. I, nice. I'm, I'm, we're living in Paso now, but I still love BCT, um, as Carla Stanley probably does as well. I hope still. <laughs> hi, Carla. Um, and Dr. Schmidt's in there somewhere, and Carol says, hi, Dr. Hi. Schmidt. Uh, <laughs> but anyway, um, we, we got motivated during Halloween to enter some contests for uh, short stories, scary short stories. And so I won the Solvang Library Short Story Contest uh, for Ghost, scary, story, Ghost Challenge. story Challenge for Scariest Story. And then we both entered into the Coastal Dunes. Fears and Phobias. Contest. Yep, and I got first and Carol got second. Second. Awesome, yeah. congratulations. Apparently we're scarier than we thought. <laughs> <laughs> Do you write together? I mean, do you collaborate or do you write separately? Yeah, usually we do. Like, um, I wrote my story and Carol went through and edited it and make it, made it better. And then I told the story to Carol and then she rewrote it into a ghost story. Oh. One of the stories from my childhood later became a ghost story under her pen. And we're working on novels and things together. And That's art. awesome. Congratulations. And, and we just got something back from our editor and now we're furiously working to try and rewrite uh, our novel. Yes, those are always fun edits. All right, I'm going to mute you guys again. Anybody else? I thought I saw one more hand. Anka has her hand up. Okay, there. I see a thumb. Okay, hold on. Um, do you want me to help you unmute? I do. I Can you me. unmute Anka for yep, me, please? Got it. All right, there I am. Sorry, I'm on my back, so I'm not going to be in the picture frame for long. Um, I, I just wanted to say that I also am in the COVID anthology. I have several poems in there. Then I also have several poems in the book that Annis and I participated in with other writers. And that's all I wanted to say. Congratulations. Yes. <laughs> I know Annis is, the, Annis is always the spokeswoman, but I, we know that um, you're very much a part of that too. So congratulations. <laughs> Alrighty. Thank you. So uh -huh. Anybody else? I don't want to miss anybody. If I do, if I miss somebody, just put it in the chat and we'll read it out. So I am going to move forward. Um, what, we, what we do next, since we're a writing group, we write for three minutes and then we share. And so I have a, um, I have a prompt. I have a one word prompt. Anybody can write, anybody can share. If you've shared like the last week or, or last month, then I usually try to find somebody else to share. But my, um, the prompt for today, a useful moment, is <clears throat> the word fan, F-A-N. And you can have that mean anything you want. And so I'm gonna set my timer for three minutes and just write what you can for three minutes and then we'll go. All right, starting now.
Got about a minute left if you're writing. So you can't hear it, but the timer just went off. So everybody stop writing if you're writing. And if you'd like to share, we'll take a couple of people to share. If you have something you want to share, don't be shy. Um, Carla. Carla? Okay, go ahead and unmute Carla. Got it. <clears throat> there you go, I Carla. I wrote a little poem, fan. The fan above me is shaped like a flower of palm leaves. They turn languidly in the arid air, lifting the dust particles that lie on the furniture and in my mind. On, oh, just move on. I can't read my own writing. <laughs> oh, oh, soother of hot, hurried days. Bring me a breeze of inspiration and peace. That's awesome. <laughs> Very nice. And then go ahead and uh, mute them back again. Yep, Sandy. I'm, okay. I'm, I'm working Anybody on it. Anybody else want to share? Any brave souls? Annis? <clears throat> Fan. Church ladies decked out in summer finery complete with huge hats paraded into the tiny non-denominational church on Gratiot Avenue. Their hats, dots of color about, strewn, strewn about the sanctuary, each plucked a fan, plucked a cardboard fan from the book rail in front of them and the fanning, gentle and furious, began. That's awesome. Nice. <clears throat> it's amazing I can, just, I can see it. It's amazing what people come up with in three minutes, you know. Aaron Polly. Okay, and then we'll do you got you got Aaron? Okay. I got Aaron. Okay. Oh, I was I was just trying to uh, applaud her writing. Uh -huh. oh, okay. Oh. <laughs> okay, one more. I think Terry and Carol. Yep, I'm I'm looking for them. There they are. <laughs> You're good. I am a fan of fans. The steady hum of whirring blades, the cold breeze blowing the valley heat away, making life cooler, removing the things that make me suffer, sound and air masking the reality of our world. That's awesome. Amen. That's awesome. <clears throat> well, thank you everybody for sharing. That's, um, if you ever are stuck and you just can't write anything, set the timer for three minutes and just come up with the word. Honestly, I came up with the word because I was looking and I saw Bill and Shelly's ceiling fan. I didn't think about this in advance. I will tell you, <laughs> most of the time I come up with it on the spot and I'm panicking like, oh my gosh, oh my gosh. But you know, you can come up with a word like mashed potatoes or- um, That's two words. Oh, sorry, potatoes. <laughs> yes, okay, well, it's one thought, but- um, uh, Natalie Goldberg, right? Annis, is that the right name? Okay, Natalie Goldberg has some awesome books and just writing, writing down the bones is one of them and old friend from far away. And she talks about writing memoir and she has just one word prompts in there and mashed potatoes is one of her one word prompts, but I think she says it goes together. So. 
Okay, so let's do announcements. Um, Annis, would you like to speak one more time? Annis is gonna talk about um, Open Mic Mondays. So Sandy, you can unmute. Doing it. Okay. There we go. Okay, thank you very much. Um, we're having our, th our third Open Mic Monday on December 7th. <laughs> Some of you, you look familiar, you've been there and uh, we've enjoyed your work. And we would love for anyone else who is a member to come and read their work um, on December 7th. In the, next will, few, oh, sorry. in the next few days, I'll be sending out an email that will remind you about it and uh, tell you to go to Eventbrite to register for Open Mic Monday. Registration will close um, Saturday night. So before six o'clock on Saturday, you need to have registered if you want to uh, participate on December 7th. So uh, the, the date on there, the 5th, is actually the deadline for registration. It's not correct. The, yeah. So correct. I got kind of something right. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, register by December 5th at 6 p.m. You'll have five minutes to read either. Um, two or three poems, what, however long that your poetry takes, or five minutes of your work in progress or some work that you've already published. It's a friendly crowd and we enjoy hearing each other's work. And it's a great way to read your stuff aloud and see the reaction to it and, um, and uh, get some feedback. So we hope you'll join us. It's, it's really a kind group. And last time we had about 10 or 12 people and the first time we did it, we had 10 or 12 people. So we're looking for 10 or 12 or 15 <laughs> or 20. All right, thanks. I hope to see you there. Thanks, Annis. Okay, so um, also in the December is our BYOB, which is our um, Bring Your Own Brunch. And this is a members only. Normally in December, we have our winter dinner, but um, that's not gonna happen this year. So instead we're having our online BYOB and members will receive an email invitation uh, around the first week or so of December <clears throat> to register. You will have to register because we have to keep track of our count. We only have, you know, limited spaces, but we just want to make, and it's free, you know, there's no charge for this. And at that time, we're going to be announcing the, um, the fall writing contest winners, which is huge. And we're gonna be doing some breakout rooms. So all of you that are members that haven't had a chance to chat with each other in a while, we'll be making sure we have breakout rooms so everybody can kind of chat and catch up and all that kind of good stuff. So keep an eye out for that. Um, upcoming, as you see, I made the mistakes, but the um, December 7th is Open Mic Monday, December 19th. We did have to move that. It's the 19th of December, not the 12th, but it's updated on <clears throat> all of our agendas and everything. 2021, I am excited. Um, right now we have stuff going on through June. And, and of course, you know, June is the end of our fiscal year. So right now that's what we're planning. Um, <clears throat> in our January 16th meeting, we have Bill and Mia Ballou and they're gonna be talking about how to find and engage with readers for your books. February 20th, I'm very excited. We have a literary agent from New York. Her name is Leslie Zampetti, and she is a literary agent. <clears throat> like I said, she's gonna be coming to us from New York and she's gonna be speaking on finding the right agent. So if anyone is interested in getting an agent, you do not wanna miss this. So, um, March 20th, Mara Pearl, Pearl, she is going to be talking about audiobooks, giving your book a voice, audiobook production and distribution. So I know a lot of us have been really interested in putting our, our print books to audio. So this one is a big one. April 17th, this is one of my favorite, favorite cozy mystery, uh, cozy mystery writers. Um, he writes under the pen name of Miranda James. He writes The Cat in the Stacks Mysteries. And um, anyway, Dean is going to come and talk about how to kill for fun and profit. <laughs> so he's gonna be talking about not only writing mysteries, but he's gonna be talking about writing series. And he's also, he worked, he was a um, indie book distributor for 30 years. And so he's gonna be talking about how to get your books in the indie bookstores and, and whatnot. So he's got, he's got a lot of good stuff. 
May 15th is our walk honors. That is when um, we honor all the people in Writers of Kern. And we usually have, um, we have a Peggy Connolly scholarship that we award and those are for writers of children's books. So keep an eye out for that. And we're not sure when that will open, but, and then June, we've got a lot of people that wanna speak in June. So we're trying to find the best of the best and we will announce that. So we're gonna take, if you need to take a three minute break, I'm gonna unmute Jack so he can do a mic check. And we're gonna get started in about three minutes, but what you're gonna to wanna to do is if you need to refill your cup of coffee, um, refill your cup of coffee, use the restroom, do whatever. And so I'm just gonna make sure Jack's mic works. And then uh, we're gonna come back. It's 9.41, so I'm gonna say 9.43, just two minutes, or quickly. Jack, everything- Good okay? morning, everyone. There you go. All right, okay. thank you. So you're up at Lake Isabella, right, Jack? I am. Okay. How's the weather up there? Compared <clears throat> Actually, to not too bad. Yeah, I mean, it's nice up here. Oh, that's good. Good. Yeah. So do you see my screen pop in? Yes, we do. It's right there. Now I have to look at my phone because my clock went away. But <laughs> that's okay. So Sandy, um, Sandy's still there and Janet somewhere. Um, I'm sorry, uh, just a reminder, put your phones on mute. <laughs> anyway, for, um, so if you wanna ask Jack questions, there is at the bottom, you'll see a chat at the bottom of your screen and I'll talk about that in a few minutes too, but he's gonna be taking questions at the end. So. And Sandy and I will keep an eye on those for you, Jack. Okay. So about one more minute. I see some people have left their chairs. Okay, 9.43, we are gonna get started again. And um, so what, like I said, if you have questions for Jack, you'll wanna scroll down and you can put them in the chat and, he, and we will read them all at the end so he can continue talking. And right now what I'd like to do is introduce our speaker, Jack W. Peters. He has been involved with television and movie production since 2004. He's been a professional speaker for 16 years. He presents on topics including leadership, teamwork, innovation, and faith. The highlight of his career was becoming a Discovery Channel TV personality as an explosives and GPS expert. Welcome, Jack. Wow, thank you, Joe. What an introduction. And thanks for having me, everyone. I really appreciate it. It's nice to spend my Saturday morning with you all. I'm going to start off with a question. You know that there are publishing house and movie studio executives who are trying to find talented authors like us. These people have the capacity and the checkbook to change our life overnight. And the question is, can they find you? And if they do find you, what are they going to see? And does your online presence or maybe your personal presence, does it look like something that they should invest a lot of money into? And are you in a position to take advantage of any opportunities that they could share with you or promote you with? As authors, we should be looking forward to these opportunities. We never know who's reading our work or paying attention to what, what we're doing. And these opportunities can be beyond our imagination. I've been blessed with a number of these different types of, of opportunities and they are as exciting as they are scary. Um, they're profitable and they change your career instantly. And um, you know, what an exciting thing to happen. 
And I'm saying if they can happen to me, they can happen to you as well. Um, I'm just going to give you a couple examples. My first book was in 2001. And it was on GPS navigation. And at the time, GPS was just coming out and made available to the public. So my timing was good. Well, Alpha Penguin Books liked this book. And shortly thereafter, they made an offer to me to write the official book on geocaching, which is a GPS-based sport that was just starting. And uh, they went ahead and published that book for me. That was my second book. And it sold over a million copies. And it's still in print now. In um, 2017, I was approached by a production company for the Discovery Channel. And, um, you know, they asked me if I liked explosives and treasure hunting and outdoor adventure and all these things. And I said, well, yeah, of course I do. And they finally made the offer to me to go to Bolivia, South America, to be one of four cast members and the explosives guy for a series called Treasure Quest that aired in 2018. And most recently, um, I just got back from a small island in Alaska, Adak Island, which is 1140 miles out of the Aleutian Island chain from Anchorage uh, to, uh, to do a very large explosive blast. I can't tell you much more about it, but you can tune into Netflix and see it. And I just got permission actually to announce the name of the show. It's called Adak Gold that will air on Netflix this spring. So, um, you know, very exciting things and looking forward to doing more of these sort of things. Um, here's what I'm going to show you real quick, what Jack looks like on television. And action. There it goes. No sound, Jack. No sound. No sound. Okay, let's try. Let's try something real quick. Okay. Let me. We did okay, practice this last night, so it I've works. got this now. I had to hit share computer sound again. Let's try this okay. now. So the mission is we set a series of explosive charges along this ridge line that has all this loose rock and try to make them directional so it sends the boulders off the cliff. What I've done is I've created special shaped charges that essentially punch the boulders hard, break them apart, and move them out of the way into pieces away from our dig site. It's a tricky job. This is a dead cord, exploding fuse. It's good for connecting charges together. We hook the blasting cap up first in case there's any static electricity in the line. It doesn't blow the charge up in our lap. All right, this is good. Let's keep moving down the line. I'm going to carefully back out of here without tripping over the wire. All right. There's a huge element of danger to this. There's also a huge element of responsibility on my part. We're hitting these boulders pretty hard. So when it comes to safety, my main concern is I'm not showering anybody down below when that rock's flying through the air. OK, we have a live blast zone. Let's bug out. We're going to make some noise. 
There's a big rain cloud moving in. Jack, how you doing up there, buddy? We're losing light. We're waiting for your countdown. Copy, stand by. Got rid of those rocks. <laughs> Holy shit. Ground team. Bro, the rocks are clear. Stand by. All the shots are clear. You get any rock down there? We were safe. Best news all day. Thank you. That's it, man. All right, guys. I hope that freaking worked. Okay. Hope the, the audio came through on that one. Okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Excellent. So that was a clip from Discovery Channel's Treasure Quest. <clears throat> so, you know, honestly, I'm a blessed guy and I'm having a lot of fun, but it's been a long road. I come from humble blue collar beginnings. In fact, I'm going to take you back to the 80s. Uh, right before I had the opportunity to graduate from high school, I met with a guidance counselor. And this guidance counselor looked at me and he looked at my grades and he looked back at me and he said, Jack, have you ever considered a career in small engine repair? And it, it wasn't that I was that thick. It's just that at the time I couldn't appreciate what I was learning and how that would affect my life. I mean, I knew I was going to do something cool, but I didn't know what I was going to do or how I was going to get there. And really, that's what this presentation is about, is how to get your career to the next level, how to get beyond just hoping and dreaming about something and starting to take tangible actions to make a difference, to uh, distinguish ourselves and to be discovered and to find a level of success. And I know success has a lot of different meanings to a lot of different people. For me, it's, it's simple. I want to have fun and I want to make money at this craft. And I'm guessing if you're hanging out with me on Saturday morning, you feel, you know, the same way. Now, I'm also very excited to announce a book that I just released last week. It is called The Goldfish That Barked, Seven Actions to Distinguish Yourself for Success. And that's what this talk is based upon. Um, I've been working on this book Oh, I guess for about a year or so. And it's, it's exciting to have it released. The, the uh, title of the book was coined by a desert racing friend of mine named Lloyd Cruz. And he was telling us once about some rental properties he had that he fixed up and traded up and he kept trading up rental properties until he was able to buy a shopping center. And he said, Hey, I'm the goldfish that barked. And I remembered that. And I said, I'm stealing that title for, for a book. Um, the book itself was also inspired by a couple of keynote speeches I had for young people. One was a school district, uh, seventh through 12th grade, and then also for 750 Boy Scouts for another event. And so I was thinking about, you know, what is some wisdom that I'd like to share with these young people that I sure wish I knew when I was that age, I could have saved you know, a lot of years of heartache and so forth if I would have just had a little more information like us all. And it turns out that these principles, not only are they good for young people, but they're also good for media professionals or business people or really anyone that wants to, you know, raise um, their life and their career. And as a gift to all of you that have went ahead and, and registered this morning, I'm going to send you a PDF copy of the book. Uh, I got a list of emails uh, this morning. It looks like we have a nice full house today, which is great. I'm going to go ahead and, and when I can get those emails uh, processed, I'm going to send you a book and there's no, no catch. There's no obligation. Uh, if you uh, enjoy the book, I just ask that you share it with someone else. That simple. And I hope you do. Uh, I'm very passionate about it. And I think it'll make a, a positive difference in your life. Okay. So we got our coffee. Uh, let's get down to work here. We're going to um, go over these seven principles, these seven actions. 
Uh, I'm going to take you to church real quick. And then we're also going to go to happy hour where you can um, ask questions and we can make this a little more interactive. So the first action, I'm going to get back to my PowerPoint here. There it goes. Whoops. Building your brand. And this is important because everything that we spend money on in life is its own brand. I mean, think about it. When you go grocery shopping, when you go to a sporting event, when you buy a car, um, you know, your favorite author, everything is a, is a brand, right? That means that we are brands also. And I use this example here with Disney. Uh, because, you know, they have so many brands and they're actually um, kind of massive branding. And so what I want us to think about is that, hey, we're a brand too. And that means when someone thinks about um, our name and our work, they're going to have a certain impression. And big brands like Disney or, or whoever else they have lots of public relations people and marketing people and advertising people to make them look good. We usually don't have that. Uh, so we have to kind of do that ourselves. And here's some interesting things with brands is that um, when we do business with a certain brand, we tend to either have a positive impression or a negative impression. Sometimes it's neutral, but usually it's one or the other. And what I'll, I'm going to back up for a minute too. When you registered for this event, there's a handout that you can uh, print out. Looks like, looks like this, where I go through the seven actions and it gives you a chance to fill in blanks and think about some things that I'm chatting about. You know, ask yourself if, you know, well, first of all, let's get down to your self image. Is it positive or negative? And when other people look at you and your work, is it positive or negative and why? And what can we do to enhance our brands? I mean, we, we can do something because brands are dynamic. They're not stationary. They change and, you know, on an ongoing basis. The other thing interesting about branding is like, let's use the example of a car. We might buy a car based on its looks and appearance, but we may keep it or buy another one based upon quality and consistency. And we've got to look at ourselves the same way. If someone hires us or we produce books, people are going to expect them to be quality and consistent so they keep coming back for more. Does that make sense, you guys? All right. Good. So just, just some basic things. Um, you know, is your bio updated or your resume? We don't really, in the media world, we're not going to use resumes. We're going to use bios. And what that's going to be is a highlight of our achievements that when we talk with someone, like you get a chance to talk with maybe a publisher or an agent or maybe a store that can carry your products, you're gonna give them a bio so they can see what you can do. Now, companies can also have a capability statement, which is similar, but on a corporate level where you can show what you can do and how many employees you have and all that sort of thing. But we wanna have that updated and ready to go. So when you meet someone, and you get that card, you can send that to them and say, this is what I can do. And this is what I have done. And let me know what, I, how I can help you, right? Just have that available. <clears throat> the other thing is just simple things, outgoing message on your voicemail, email address. Um, you know, we've seen like offensive email addresses and different thing, pictures and that sort of thing that can turn us off. Um, maybe it's okay in, on personal levels, but if you're expecting someone to in, invest a lot of money into you, you've got to look professional in every level. Um, social media is a whole nother animal that, um, you know, is huge. And, you know, it's good to go through social media sites and clean things up. I did this a couple of years ago and I was almost surprised how many old pictures I had and junk stuff on there that should have been taken down. Go through and clean that stuff up. People can tag you into pictures and sort of things that may not be completely complimentary or do the most for your brand. So you wanna you know, keep that updated all the time. Other things is physical appearance. 
and, and, you know, maybe other, you know, your office, your, your house, your vehicle, anything that, that is your appearance is essentially your brand. And so we have to think about all these things all the time and always think about what can we do to shine a little bit more and be a little more impressive? Because again, the idea is we want to catch someone's attention that can do something for us to, you know, increase our career. <clears throat> The next thing I'm going to talk about is falling into traps. And this is really, especially for us creative people, we all know that creative people can really have their share of problems. The more um, creative we can be, the more susceptible we can be to addiction. Um, and so what I'm asking is that we need to be aware of what can prevent us from doing what we need to do, right? So, you know, there's a lot of different vices and there's a lots of the different addictions. But what I want to ask you is what's stopping you, if anything, from achieving what you want to achieve? And now if you want to do a series of novels, as an example, what's preventing you, you know, from doing that? I mean, you know, life is full of distractions. Maybe you just binge watch TV instead of writing your own stories, you're too busy watching someone else's stories. And you can do it, you know, you can chalk up a certain percentage of that to research, right? But you can't do it, you know, 10 hours a day. So think about whatever that is that's keeping you from doing what you're supposed to do. And, and with like, especially young people and others, I talk, you know, about addiction and so forth, where there are certain things that are so addictive, even if they're legal, like video poker or pot or whatever, and then and hard drugs, you know, you use these things once and it's not just going to a treatment center once. It's a lifetime of pain and suffering and, and the struggle of trying to overcome an addiction. And so the best thing to do is to not fall into those traps to begin with, which, of course, is easier said than done. But I, I have people think about alternatives. You know, instead of doing one thing, do something else that's positive or recognizing triggers that make you want to do something unhealthy for some it may be loneliness right now because we're so isolated like now we're on zoom instead of getting to see each other in person and i'm really hoping that we all can come back to normal at some point and get to spend time with each other because as humans we need to do that but just as the example if we get lonely does that mean we're going to maybe drink more or do something we're not you know that we shouldn't do there that's unhealthy and on a career level, that's either, you know, uh, keeping us from, from being our best or doing what we're supposed to do. So, you know, on the sheet, I've got, you know, what are things that we need to avoid? And um, what are things that, um, you know, that, that can trigger us to make a bad choice? And what's a substitute we can do? Like, uh, I have an associate that had a, a problem with uh, video poker. And, um, and it can be a real problem. I mean, it's, some people play it for fun. Some people put their whole check into those machines, right? I'm like, well, here's an alternative. You know, I, I uh, learned how to do um, stock trading on my phone. And that's a little bit like gambling, but it pays off versus just dumping your paycheck. So think of things that where you can kind of get the same adrenaline rush, but it's going to be a positive. And of course, you know, finishing books and getting them published, that's a pretty good adrenaline rush too, right? So that's a good thing to focus on instead of something else that could be negative. All right, so moving along. The next thing is uh, learn to communicate. And this is really important. I mean, we're essentially in the communication business, right? And this picture here is me actually working with special forces in India, where um, they spoke English, kind of broken English, and we use a translator and, you know, communication barriers uh, can be challenging as we work with people around the world and so forth. But we are in the communication business already. And if we can speak, or if we can write the King's English, we should be able to speak it too. And I, you know, kind of bring this up because a lot of us are painfully bashful, right? We're shy. And if we're bashful and shy, it's going to be a detriment to our career. We need to stand out and leave an impression when we talk to people. And so I've got some things that, you know, that we can all work on. You know, when you, when you get introduced to someone for the first time, it happens almost every time. Your mind goes blank 
and you just they tell you their name and you just can't remember it because you're thinking about what to say next or you're something and it just i mean it happens to me automatically i just they can sit there and tell me and then i have to say tell me your name again because when they sit it the first time i just i blacked out we got to remember people's names and we have to make our conversations more interesting we have to come up with topics that we can have fun with and as authors we should already be the most interesting people in the room right people want to hear about what authors do and 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 what we're projects we're working on and and because essentially we're in the entertainment business so we should already be the most interesting people in the room but we've got to think about how to make conversations more memorable remember their name interject humor humor breaks the ice and it makes us more interesting right and i have some examples you know in the book where um, just kind of a fun game is like when you're in, in line at the grocery store, you look at what the guy's buying or gal's buying ahead of you. And you try to come up with a story based upon what's on the conveyor belt. And uh, I was shopping once and I was bored, which is always a dangerous thing. And this very attractive lady was ahead of me. And she had a bag of frozen shrimp and a bottle of motor oil. And I said, well, that's, that's an easy one. And, and she was very attractive and she was very um, serious looking like where she was like, don't, you know, don't approach me because I'm very good looking sort of person. And I said, you know, I've always used butter and garlic on my shrimp, but how does the whole motor oil thing work? And even she had to start laughing. And then the guy, the checkout guy was laughing. And then the people behind me was, you know, was snickering a little bit. So we all had a little chat from that, but that's breaking the ice you know, due to something, you know, from something funny. So think about how you can interject humor in your conversation. And then I also talk about, and this may not apply necessarily to you, about just basically using better grammar. A lot of people cuss so much, you know, they drop the F-bomb like a comma, um, you know, and that may be fine in certain circles. But if we're trying to be professional and we're trying to distinguish ourselves, it's better if we can clean up, you know, our language a little bit. And, um, and be more professional that way. And then of course, the, you know, the, the, the last thing I'm gonna mention is, you know, a lot of times we'll send things off. I do this, I'll send off messages, emails, or release books and realize it just isn't ready. It's not right. Uh, we get in a, I get in a hurry. Maybe some of us get in a hurry when we wanna, we wanna share something with somebody, but it's sure worth it to take the time uh, to get a proofreader, a professional proofreader. Joan helps me out and it's been a career changing uh, deal for me. But just even on casual communication, just stop and proofread it before you send it out. Because once things are out, they're out there forever in the cyber world and it's hard to change them or get them back, right? So it's always just good to think about our communication, not do anything in the heat of passion there and make sure that what we're sending off, whether it's a photograph or a comment or our, our bio or something professional that's going to represent us in the best light possible. <clears throat> the next topic is edu educate yourself. And actually in as as authors and media people, you know, we should be experts on being experts, right? When we work on our books, we have to often write about subject matter that we don't may not know anything about. We may have a character that is, you know, who knows what, you know, some kind of a scientist or, or does a certain career or, you know, we have to understand a topic. And maybe sometimes we spend all night trying to cram like back in college or something to get as much information as we can so we can write about it or cover it in our work. And you know, it just seems like this is something we should never stop doing is learning. I mean, now we have the whole uh, world at our fingertips. There's no reason for us not to know something. You know, we have the internet, which can be, um, you know, hit or miss, but there's, you know, podcasts and trade associations and books and videos. And if you acquire enough information, you're kind of hearing the same ideas or themes, it's probably pretty accurate. So I just, especially this is, you know, we're more motivated with young people, but, you know, getting through school just kind of gets you through the basics. High school just gets you through the very, very basics. College may, may you know, teach you how to, to learn better, but 
we need to go deep. We need to always learn more. And that makes us more interesting as authors and media people to really know a lot about a lot of different subjects. Next one is, this is a fun one, is finding your superpower. Now, everybody's good at something. And what we have to do is find out what that is. And hopefully, you know, it may be more than one thing, but we've, we've got to really find out what that is and adopt it the best we can. We don't need to reinvent the wheel. We want to be able to do something or work at something that we're already good at. A lot of times we see people that try to do one thing when their skill set is actually something else. And it's like, if you're really good at, at, you know, what you originally did, why would you waste time on something that you're not that good at, or you're not that passionate about? And, you know, superpowers or superheroes are a big deal right now. A lot of movies uh, cover superheroes, right? And so part of finding our superpower, I think, is learning how to fight like a superhero as well. And that means they don't give up, right? When you have your superpower and you become a superhero, you don't give up. You keep fighting. Even though you take the hits, you get back up and you keep going. You also do not make excuses and you don't blame others, right? You are responsibility for your, for your own destiny. You know, you're not going to go to Avengers movie or something and you're not going to see the superhero say, well, geez, I could have saved the city, but you know, that villain was just too tough and mean or something, right? You're not going to hear that. And we wouldn't pay to, to read a, a book or watch a movie if the superhero, you know, said that. So not only do we have to find our superpower, but we have to be able to fight like a superhero and just be relentless until our mission is complete. Next thing is giving thanks. Now, Benjamin Franklin was a pretty smart guy. He actually invented a lot of different things. And one of the many things that Benjamin Franklin invented was the grounding rod. And what's interesting is that back in the day, lightning used to hit a building. That building would actually explode. It would catch on fire and burn down because all that energy would hit the roof and there's nowhere for it to go. So it would just, it would be destroyed. Well, Benjamin Franklin figured out a way to put a grounding rod on top of the roof and then a cable that would go down into the ground. So that energy had a way to challenge, to channel safely away without destroying the building. I look at faith, they're very much the same way. If we have faith, it gives us an ability to be grounded within the storm, because obviously life is pretty much one storm after the other, it seems like. And we have to be able to be grounded and humble. And I think the best way to do that is to give thanks. Give thanks every day. And it can be for little things, it can be for big things. But what I've noticed is that when I thank the almighty, or I think people that have helped me out, it will automatically and instantly make you feel better. Because instead of saying, woe is me and all the problems I have, what you're doing is you're focusing on the blessings that you have. And I just think in this crazy world and in the business that we're in, the more humble we can be, the more apt we are to receive more blessings. Because the other benefit of that too is, is the more we give thanks for things, it tends to give us more things to give thanks for. So that's a pretty good return on investment. The next thing is Oh, come on. Na, 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 na. We'll get it here. This um, program is a little bit clunky. Okay, finding your mission. So finding your mission is putting all of this together that I would essentially that I've been talking about. 
what you're doing when you're looking at your mission is you're looking at what your superpower is, what you're passionate about, and what you can make money at and putting that all together. Where do those three circles, you know, meet in the middle? That should be your project. That should be your mission in life. And what's interesting is that, um, like when I, you know, I used to lead a search and rescue team and we're off in the middle of the night to try to save someone's life. You know, we don't call it a job. We don't call it a task or something that we have to do. We refer to it as a mission. A mission gives it importance and it gives it urgency. And we should look at our own lives in those uh, standpoints. What is, you know, urgent and what is critical for us to complete in life? And if, if we've determined that what we're good at and what we're passionate about and what we can make money at is writing, boy, that's excellent. So then maybe what the mission is, what's the next book, right? What's the next media project that falls into that criteria? And I think if we can look at those three things and kind of focus on that, then that keeps us from essentially um, wasting time, money, and energy on something that, that doesn't work. And I've worked on a lot of media projects also. I've worked on movies specifically with other people that kind of fell within that um, guideline. But the problem was the p other people involved just wouldn't finish anything. They just, they didn't see the big picture of completing the task. And it just kind of went into reshoots and rewrites and on and on and on without ever actually finishing anything. And as us in the media world, we have to consider ourselves not only writers, but we're also in the manufacturing business. Our job is to create a story or a book, write it, edit it, put a beautiful cover on it, and then sell it, right? We're not going to write a book for years and years and years and never have it finished. I've done that, by the way, and I'm sure all you have a few projects that have, are almost old enough to vote now. Uh, I know I do. Uh, and I'll get them finished because I feel like I'm, I've got some momentum now and I'm having a lot of fun doing it. But we want to be able to turn things around. We want to be able to create projects, make them, manufacture them and sell them. Because really, you know, how much money do we make on projects that we almost finish, right? That almost get published. How much money? Zero. <laughs> Zero. So we want to get things done. And, and get our figure out what our mission is, whether that's it's writing or what, what we're actually specifically going to write and get that done so we can make a living at our craft. Whoops. Okay, so what we're going to look at is, you know, as far as reaching your goal, I mean, you know, let's look at, we kind of break it into three different groups or three different segments. What can we do now? What can we do over the next year? And then what can we do over the next five years? And there's a lot of things that we can do that doesn't necessarily cost a lot of money. And of course, writing kind of falls in that. We can do a lot of writing and do a lot without necessarily spending a lot of money. But kind of look at things in that way. You know, what, what can we do now? What can we do in a year? And what can we do in five years? And I think also that, you know, once a year is a really good time to do an assessment where you look at what you did over the last year and you look at the good and the bad and what you're happy with and what you're not happy with. And then you can make adjustments for that following year. And then in, in kind of conclusion, what I want you to do is think about, a, you know, three different things here. You absolutely get what you focus on. If you focus on problems, you tend to get more problems. If you focus on negativity, you get more negativity, drama, more drama, you get the idea. But fortunately, if you flip that around, you get the opposite. If you focus on writing more books or creating more time to write, you'll get more writing done. If you focus on making a plan to publish more books, you'll publish more books. If you focus on really, uh, 
improving your um, your professional uh, appearance and uh, and projects and so forth, then you're opening yourself up to be found and discovered and do even greater media projects. So you know you get what you focus on. If you feed yourself negativity, self doubt, you tell yourself you can't do something. Guess what? Self fulfilling prophecy. And if you're hanging out with someone that's, that says you can't be a writer, well, if you start writing, you're a writer. And if they tell you you can't be an author, it, once you publish that first book, upload it to Amazon, congratulations, you're an author. So the best thing to do is to show people that you can do these things and just do them because it's hard uh, for someone to tell you you can't do something if you're already doing it, right? The other thing is, is not to let anyone define you. I mean, life is not a stagnant thing. If I let someone define me, I would be fixing your lawnmower right now based upon the advice I got from my high school guidance counselor, right? So even though you may start off one way in life, it really doesn't matter how you start. It's how you finish. Don't let anyone define you. You need to exceed expectations for yourself. And you don't need to try to exceed expectations for others all the time. You're not here to please everybody. Just do a good job for yourself. Find your mission and be passionate about what you do. And you'll be in a whole nother light to yourself and everyone else that sees you. And lastly, don't place limits on yourself. You, you don't even, you can't even imagine what someone might offer you. Someone might like your book or whatever you're doing, and they may offer to make a series on television about it or a movie about it or who knows what. You, you, don't even, you, you can't even imagine. The opportunities that I got were bigger than what I could have come up with on my own and bigger than what I expected. And just there's no reason you know, to do that. You want to be able to get that phone call where maybe an associate calls you and says, the executives from blank publishing house or uh, film production crew um, want a conference call with you in an hour. Have your bio ready and be ready to go. You want to be able to be prepared for that phone call. And if you're in this business long enough, you're going to get it. And here's the fun part is that they'll come on the phone and, on the, and they're going to say, we want to do this with your project. And on the outside, you're saying, oh, yeah, very nice. That sounds interesting. Let me check my calendar. But on the inside, you're saying, yes, thank God. I knew it. Finally, they figured out that, I, you know, I can do this. So, you know, but have fun with it because not everybody gets to do this. We are blessed people by our nature, right? Uh, we get to do stuff that most people don't get to do and being in the entertainment business and the media business. So enjoy it and just keep working forward. Do something really big and really cool. And, and then after that, you know, do it again, right? Thank you, everybody. I appreciate it. Thanks, Jack. Um, if anybody has questions, go ahead and put them in the chat. I am going to um, start off, Jack. First of all, thank you. Awesome, very, very motivating. Um, I love the part, don't let anyone define you, you know, yeah. because a lot of times people want to tell you who they think you should be. Um, I deal with a lot of people um, in, in my creative writing classes, you know, in, with writers, they have the fear of failure and it stops them. I mean, you know, I, I can see their talent, but they can't see it. And then, you know, even myself, when I'm in the middle of writing a book, I can feel like, oh my gosh, this is going to be terrible. Mm -hmm. So what would you say to someone that has started something, but the fear of failure is freezing them. I, and then, mm -hmm. so they go to the, the next project or they, you know, they figure, okay, well, I, I do much better doing this, you know, even though they have that other one on the burner. Excellent question, Joan. And that's, you know, that's an easy one, I think, to address because I mean, naturally, you know, we're afraid of things. We can be afraid of things, but what gets us through that is confidence. So if you're afraid of writing a novel or you feel like it's never going to be good enough, you know, do a short story. And have your friends help you with it and make it better and better until you can work your way in doing a full book. I think the best thing in life is that we leverage the little victories. We have one small victory after another. We don't start in this business by writing a best-selling novel, right? If we could do that, you know, we wouldn't be here. We'd just be on a beach somewhere. 
we do one little victory at a time and we leverage it up to the next thing. Write a few pages, write a short story, have your friends critique it. And that's the great thing with, with associations like this is we're surrounding ourselves with writers that have been through it. They know how to do things that they've, they've tried lots of different things. And, the, and then you can learn what works and what, what doesn't. So you don't have to try to waste time and money reinventing the wheel. Do one thing and, and leverage it up into something a little bit bigger and then a little bit bigger until you can uh, share with your friends and your loved ones and everyone else a link to that book that you now have on Amazon or somewhere else. And the other thing I think is that, um, you know, pursue excellence and not perfection. Perfection is a really a difficult thing to get. You know, there's not a lot of things in life that are perfect, but there are a lot of things in life that are excellent. And so when you prepare something or you create something, don't ask yourself is, if it's perfect. I mean, if it is great and, and with enough polishing, it could be perfect, but ask yourself, is it excellent? And then take it to someone like in my case, I have Joan help me out, take it to someone that can make it even better. So you're starting off with excellence and then you're, and then you're sharing it with your, with your people that can help you, your team, even though we work on our own, we still have a team, right? We have people that can help edit, that can help create covers, that can do publicity websites and all kinds of things that we need. Have them take your work and your ideas and make them even better. And then you can have that confidence where you don't have to feel like you're so afraid to, to do something because it requires being bold in this business. You're throwing everything out there. I mean, you're writing about personal things or, pers or, or people's personal issues. And this is not the business to be bashful, right? So be brave and, and just do it. And if you're doing something, no one can tell you you can't. Um, I agree. And I know you absolutely love blowing things up, but I'm sure at some point there's a little bit of fear, but you have to find a way to work through that fear. I mean, if you mess up, <laughs> it, it can be kind of fatal, but if you yes. mess up in a book, you know, if you publish a book and there's mistakes, it's not going to kill you. I mean, in right. mentally or emotionally, it might, but like, I guess you just have to learn how to work through that fear. Well, and I think that we should do things that scare us because that's how we grow. And like, as an example, I mean, more people would rather almost die than do public speaking or some ridiculous statistic, right? I mean, speak in front of the, the group or something and, and face your fears because that's how you grow in life. I mean, you don't grow by not ever pushing yourself. And, you know, in blasting for me, it met my need for adrenaline. I mean, that's kind of my addiction is I, I need, you know, adrenaline. And when you're on a film set or something, it is a little scary because there's a lot of people and they're all relying on you. And they're also sometimes in the way. And to try to keep everyone safe is a challenge. And what was interesting in the little video clip that I showed you guys, what they didn't show is they had a drone operator that was buzzing over that, that mountaintop there. And they found this big bull with horns. And they thought it was funny to take the drone and buzz the bull and get it all fluffed up. So I look up and this bull was all snot and horns, all mad and angry. And now I'm trying to figure out, you know, not to have an encounter with the bull. And then he ran through my line where I was, you know, so I went to hit the, the button and nothing happened because the bull tore up the line and it started to get dark. And I had to go through and look for the bull because he went missing and try to patch up the, the electrical cord to be able to set off the electric, the, the explosive charges with this bull roaming around somewhere. And so, you know, you never know what's going to happen in life, but the more you face your fears, the more apt you are of dealing with w w whatever crazy storm is going to come at you next. A lot of people are saying great things. Thank you, Jack. This gives me guidance on how to move forward in my writing career. I especially liked your thoughts on gratitude. That's from Carla. Um, Susie says, I've watched um, him brand himself and chase his dreams and succeed over 20 years. This book is speaking to me as if it was written with me in mind. Good job, Jack. Wow. Um, thanks for the encouragement. Anna says, good point on pursuing excellence over perfection. Show mm -hmm. up on Open Mic Monday. And yeah, don't be afraid. Just, you know. Annis asked, Jack, what advice do you have for folks um, about how to find their mission? Well, look at the printout. And because you're going to, there's three different things on there. 
you know, what are you good at? What are you passionate about and what you can make money at? Those three things have to collide. And, you know, for some people, they don't need to make money. That's not me. I mean, most of us have to make a living too, right? And so look at those three things really carefully. And because you want, you know, you want to be good at it, or at least have the ability to be good at it. And I say, if you're really, honestly, if you don't think you're good at anything, can you show up to work with a positive attitude and work your butt off? That alone is a superpower to be able to do that. So that's a start. If you don't really feel like you're good at anything, show up with a positive attitude. And second, what are you passionate about? There's something that's got to get you out of bed in the morning that you're excited about. And, and in this case, you all got up early and on Saturday morning to, you know, to hang out with me. So, you know, got to give you that. What, you know, what gets you out of bed? What, what makes you excited in life? Um, I have a number of things that, that I enjoy doing. And, and then you have to focus because hobbies don't make money. They cost money, right? But for a profession, you've got to find what you're good at, what you're passionate about, and what can make you money. And the nice thing with authors and, and writing and media is that we can do projects that, that easily fall into all three of those categories. And of course, what I like about books is their ongoing revenue all the time. Same thing with movies and other things is that, you know, good movies and good projects generate revenue for decades. And not only is that for us, but that's our legacy. That's something that we can leave off to our family and our children and so forth where they can enjoy the, you know, the fruits of our labor, even after we're gone. Sandy, do you want to take the next question? I muted you because there was some background noise. Sorry. Yeah, sorry. It was the dog. Um, Susie wants to know how long does it take to get a book published on Amazon? And Jack, do you know how that, how much that costs? What's the process? Well, the nice thing with that is it doesn't take long and it doesn't cost anything. Um, I mean, I should say, I should back up. It doesn't cost to have a book published on Amazon. To uh, have a book published on Ingram Spark is what, $50, right? But the, the cost is the time it takes to write it and then to polish it, to have it professionally edited and then to have the cover and you know other uh, marketing pieces, the blurb, the taglines, the photographs, uh, the information about the author, putting all that together. And what's interesting is that um, some people take a decade to do that. And other people are so focused, they do 10 a year, right? Um, that was interesting. Recently, I released an off-road travel book. And someone said, wow, you got that book out so quick. And the first copyright on that book was 2004. I mean, it's been on, you know, on my desk for over a decade. And um, and that's no fun either. I mean, you want to be, again, you're going back to the manufacturing aspect of it. You want to be able to create something, make it and turn it over so you can sell it. So, um, you know, it takes the time that you put into it. And then again, you want the team around you that can make it even better than what you can make it. So when it goes out there, it's polished. Because obviously when we, you know, create books, we're competing with a lot of other forms of entertainment, right? We're competing against the James Patterson's of the world and we're competing against Netflix and Amazon prime and television and video games and the internet. And there's so many things that they're comp we're competing against. So we really have to shine and make our product worthwhile for them to spend time reading or looking or watching it as well, besides all the other options that they have. And um, I know, Susie, I don't know if that answers your question. Publishing can be as expensive as, as, expensive as you want to spend. <laughs> I mean, if you want to spend $1,000 on a cover designer, you can do that or, you know. So um, an Ingram Spark, just for anyone, Jack mentioned Ingram Spark, it's, it's another um, place to publish you, if you publish through Ingram Spark, then your book can be listed with or bought through indie publishers like um, those in town here for Russo's. Um, you can have your book, Russo's can order your book if you do through Ingram Spark. They can't through Amazon. So just, I suggest looking those, those um, different publishing options up. 
Um, <clears throat> let's see, Jeanette says, Jack, thank you so much for your positivity and encouragement. Your advice is exactly what I need to hear right now. Excellent. Um, I think a lot of us need more positivity and encouragement right now because, I mean, writing for me has been hard this year. I don't know about anybody else, but mm -hmm. it's just not been as easy. Mm -hmm. And I think it's just because of the uncertainty. And I'm, you know, mm -hmm. I can admit that. I can say it's harder to write, but I haven't stopped writing. I might have right. slowed down. And, you know, sometimes clouds can have a silver lining. When people are at home, they're reading more. Mm -hmm. So book sales are up right now. That's true. You know, and there is a lot of uncertainty and so forth. But if we're pursuing our mission, we don't let little things bog us down. We know what we're supposed to do in life and we need to get it done. And that should be your, a priority over anything else. So we're not easily sidetracked by maybe what's in the news or what could happen somewhere else. You know, what I fear is not finishing projects until I expire, right? I want, there's a certain amount of things I want to do while I'm still on this planet. And that's what I fear is not getting those done. So I'm trying to uh, use some momentum and, and just keep the ball rolling. And that's the thing is, you know, keep that wheel spinning. And that's where, you know, where you can just keep finishing one thing at a time, one small victory at a time, maybe just a few chapters a day, a few pages a day, whatever it takes, but at least you're moving forward. Joanne says, thank you, Jack. Very inspiring presentation. Bill, um, I like Bill. Thanks. And truth be told, we all like to blow things up. So. <laughs> <laughs> Well, tune into Netflix this spring, and you're going to see a big explosion uh, that was, you know, a lot of fun, actually, and very exciting. And the history behind it is, is amazing. I don't want to let the cat out of the bag too much, but I'll uh, be in touch with you. And I'm hoping that next year, too, we can all meet in person. That would be fun, huh? If we can do a conference or do something where we get to meet everybody, you know, in person would be great. But I'll keep you posted. Um, you know, I've got websites and so forth. I'm maybe moving more towards pages on on Facebook. I'm still trying to figure out the, the right way to approach this. But I have a, a fan page on Facebook, Treasure Quest Jack, that you can say hi at. I also have my publishing company, Do North Media, has a page there as well. Uh, say hi to me. And then I'm going to send you all an email too at some point, hopefully early this uh, week, and send the book out to you. Thank you, Jack. Anybody else have a question? I know um, we have a little bit more time. Let's see. Um, a question specifically for Jack. We're doing good on time. I guess everybody feels confident. Everybody feels okay. confident to pursue their mission and they're just gonna move forward and we're gonna see lots and lots of new books coming out or whatever people are doing, what are they're working on. So. That's great. You know, the neat thing with books too, is that books always have value. I mean, no one throws away a book, right? Or at least they shouldn't. Books always have value and they are your ultimate calling card and they're also your legacy. So if you get down and you're having writer's block or you think it might be better to go watch TV or goof off, remember that when you get that book done, that is part <clears throat> of your legacy. Your children and your children's children will keep that book and they'll enjoy it long after you're gone. So no pressure, but keep that in mind. <laughs> <laughs> Since we have a, a few minutes, Joanne asked, how can books be republished? And I know she asked it just directly to me, but um, Jack, do you want to, you've republished what, two books now? Well, in the, the difference is that a lot of my books are textbooks or how-to books that need to be updated all the time. And by that, I mean every couple of years. So I've got, as an example, I've got a textbook on explosives and I've got another textbook on explosives for law enforcement. And I've got an off-road travel book. And these books, as technology changes, you know, you want them fresh so they can keep selling. If a book gets stagnant based on technology or what, whatever the, the latest thing is, those sales are going to drop off. If you've already written the book, I want to keep sales going all the time. So it's worth it to revisit that book every couple of years and update it. And that's of course easy to do uh, with Amazon or Instagram spark. You can, you know, redo the body, you can update the cover, put whatever edition you on it. And then that also gives you something new to tell people about, Hey, here's the fifth or sixth edition of this book. We've updated it to cover whatever the latest subject is. 
and that takes something old and makes it new again. Yep. Marketing, marketing, yep. marketing, always be marketing yourself. Yeah, absolutely. And your books right now are available in print and ebook. Well, I don't, the, the goldfish book will be an ebook as soon as it's, it's converted over, but that's not done yet. Right. But the so other the books Gold, are. Yeah. yeah. Goldfish was just released last week uh, and on Amazon. And, um, and I, and I'm interested in watching your uh, presentation coming up on audiobooks because I want to convert it to an audiobook. Right. And then I'm also going to convert it to an ebook. I've never done an ebook before because my other textbooks are so heavy in photographs and, and, um, and diagrams and stuff, they don't convert over well to an ebook. Uh, but the goldfish will be an ebook. I want it in every form I can sell it in or, or give it away in. So, right. Okay. Yeah, be important. So I'm learning too. I mean, I've got to learn how to do all that or, or find someone that I can have help me with that. And that's just it. You don't have to do it all yourself. You know, it's hard to do everything yourself. I mean, mm -hmm. as life gets more complicated, the more we can do ourselves, we can save a little money. But the bottom line is we just can't do everything ourselves. So you've got to put together that team where you can have people help you and make you look good and also do things that you don't want to do like accounting or editing or whatever else, because you've got, I mean, again, your mission is what you're good at and what you can make money at and what you're passionate about. It may not be accounting or administration or trying to figure out how to build a website. It, you know, you've got to focus on what you're good at because that's, that's where your money is right there. Yep. Sounds good. Okay. Well, I think um, there's, there'll be no more questions. If anybody else has a question for Jack, um, you'll have his email when he sends you the uh, PDF copy. And um, from what Jack had mentioned to me, anyone that was pre-registered, he has your email. If you're watching this on a replay, how can they get a hold of you, Jack? Do you, um, how can they get a hold of you? Well, my email is jack at dunorthmedia.com. And that's D-O North, like the direction, media.com. Jack at dunorthmedia.com. The website's dunorthmedia.com. And then again, on Facebook, it's Treasure Quest Jack. Awesome. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much, Jack. Um, and thank you, everybody else. Thank you, Sandy, for helping. Janet, I know you didn't do a whole lot, but you were there and you kind of, you know, you gave me confidence and courage to keep going <laughs> in spite of my my mistakes that i already owned up to so for the um, part that's thank you Anna. <laughs> <laughs> anyway so for um we will not be having a regular meeting next month it'll just be our members only meeting and um then so starting in january We'll be back to our regular schedule and all of those meetings will be no charge because we, our board has decided that we are not going to charge for our online meetings mm -hmm. like today's, you know, we feel like we want to give really good content and not charge people to come and see it. And don't forget about open mic Monday, which is on the seventh, not the fifth, but the fifth is the deadline to, um, to register. So anyway, thanks, Jack. Thanks everybody. Have a wonderful day. Thank you so much, everyone. Thank you, Joan. And everyone look forward to meeting you all in person too. Thank you. Yeah. And there will be a, a recording. Um, this is being recorded and the recording will be up on, um, I should say the recording will be up on our Writers of Kern Facebook page right away. It probably will not, will not be on our website right away because our person that does that is um, not able to do that right now. So um, out of town, that's not why. And so anyway, um, but there will be a recording available. Thanks, Jack. Thank you.